Welcome, today we're going to be using a foam roller in many many ways to help us with our shoulder organization and we need a wall to help us for that. I'll be showing good movement as well as faulty movements that can come up into these exercises so pay attention to doing the good one and not the bad one. So we're going to begin with um, the roller against the wall in a long position and make sure that the palm of your hand is against the flat of the edge there. We're going to be standing so that the roller would be mimicking our arm on the outside of the body. So in this position you're looking to keep this arm as straight as possible through the whole movement. You're going to press away from your hand and you will feel your shoulder blade sliding forward, what we call protraction. You keep the arm straight and you let that shoulder slide back around the rib cage called retraction. So we're just going to be going forward and backward in this motion. So this is a good way of doing it. A bad way of doing it would be sort of bending the elbow, squeezing up at the neck, winging in the back of the shoulder blade or even losing contact with the foam roller against the wall. So getting that isolation of movement of your shoulder blade sliding forward and backward, keeping even on your feet. We'll do one more time and then you're going to find the halfway point where you're neither fully forward or fully back. And then we're going to play with the opposite arm and leg. So you're going to slide the arm to the front and the leg towards the back and then swing them past each other. You're just going to imagine yourself as though you were walking through space, keeping good contact with your arm against the shoulder and not overly swinging the leg backward and bending into your back body, but just getting these pendulum swings of the arm and the leg moving freely. We'll go one more time forward and back and then resting down. From here we're going to finish with a push-up position so you're going to bend into your elbow coming forward with your chest and we're going to be paying attention to how that shoulder lives on the back of the rib cage again. So very important that you're not going to be um, excessively pulling your shoulder back which is the retraction but see if you can keep the scapula in contact with the rib cage as you are moving to the front and the back. Also watch that you're not going to twist your body as you come forward because we are doing a single arm push-up and that can sometimes create a pattern of twisting. And then we'll go one more time letting the elbow move out to the side and traveling evenly forward and backward. All right time to go to the second side. So again setting the roller up so in the setup you always want to make sure that the shoulder height and the roller height are the same. If it's too high it won't work as well, if it's too low it won't work as well. The roller remember is on the outside of the body and you're going to push, create protraction and then draw the shoulder backwards. So it can feel very odd and sometimes you want to feel like you need to do more than is necessary. You just want to get that feeling of the bone of the shoulder blade sliding across the rib cage. That's all that it takes. There's lots of muscles that are working to help you do this movement and you're trying to not feel like it's an excessive amount of movement through those shoulders. And then finding your stability point where you're nice and balanced through the center and then we're going to add our arm and leg moving in opposition to each other. So a nice swinging past of one another and you'll feel maybe like I just did that you've got to find your stability on your standing side and on that foam roller side where you're not going to lose everything but you can still keep good form and function of the swinging arm and leg. Then we go one more time and then rest back. Still again back into your two feet stance and then we're going to go down into our push-up variation. So again that emphasis is on the back of the body not letting it overly squeeze or your head jut forward keeping good alignment. I've got my hand just resting on the side of my leg just to keep everything in line. You could put a hand behind your back is also quite a good place just to open up through the opposite shoulder side. And then again just paying attention to not wanting to rotate through your ribs as you're coming forward. You don't have to get your chest to the wall, I know that's where we all want to go, but really just finding what you can do with good stability and strength in the single arm side. And then pressing away as your last one. All right, we're going to come closer to the wall now, placing the roller out in line with your chest bone. 
So we've got one hand on each side. We're going to be walking the roller up the wall and we're going to try and do that with single hands as we do it. So if you lose control, the roller is going to slip down a little bit. And that's just a nice indication for you to realize how much pressure you need to put into each hand as it slides up. So whoop, if I did that, you would see I used not enough pressure on the hand as the arm walks up. And then from there, we'll walk the roller back down. So the image I like to use for this one is as though I had a rolling pin and the wall is some beautiful dough that I'm about to make, let's say a sourdough bread. Although I don't even think you roll that out. So we'll make it a pastry instead. <laughs> you think what you want to think and we're going to take it up for one more roll up the wall and then we're going to stay. Check that the position of your arms is balanced. Again, your arms need to be on the outside of your body. If you're too close with the arms, it's going to squeeze into your neck. Staying this distance from the wall, you slide the arms up with the shoulders lifting, and then you slide the shoulders down, keeping your arms straight. And again, sliding up and sliding down. So let's use our breathing to help us inhale, bringing the shoulders up. Exhale, bring the shoulders down. So with this one, an often um, faulty movement would be that you would be wanting to flare your ribs forward and not have great organization in the back of the body. Pay attention to your feet right now. Do you have equal pressure on each side of your foot? So toes to heel on the left, on the right. One more like this, and then feeling the shoulders rested away from the ears. Good form here. Watch how close you come, but you're going to start to go towards the wall, bringing your arms and ears in balance with each other and then moving away from the wall. So keeping everything straight, the closer you come, you'll start to notice the arms traveling up, but you haven't included the shoulders lifting in that motion and then pulling it back from the wall. We'll do one more just like that because this may be just where you want to stay and I highly recommend that this is what you do for many times before we attempt the next version. So as we're going forward, we're going to go more toward the end of the range of our shoulder joint. But as we do, we're going to be bringing our chest and our nose closer to the wall and then pressing away from it. And then again, coming closer, feeling your upper back going into a little bit of extension as the nose travels towards the wall and then coming back. As I mentioned that you are at the end range of movement through your shoulder, make sure you don't feel unstable, unsupported, vulnerable in the arms. You always want to feel that this is working for you very strongly, very supportively. And if it's not, you've got to back yourself off out of the movement and then bring yourself all the way down. Again, we'll start to walk that roller down the wall one at a time back to being in line with your chest. We're going to take it a tiny little bit lower because we're about to flip around and now put it in the small of your back. So when it's in the small of your back, you're going to have your feet just a little further forward. This isn't an opportunity to hang out and do nothing. We're staying nice and upright. We're going to get a couple of benefits here. The first one is as we bend into our knees, reach your arms forward, the roll is going to start to go up your back giving you a little massage around the muscles of your lower back and mid back. As you're coming down into your sitting position, you're keeping a more upright position of your spine. So the roller distance away from the wall is just helping you do that better and better. So we'll go for a couple more. Maintaining your form, always feeling heavy down through your feet, but light through the rest of you. Stay here and we're going to start to lift a heel up away from the ground and then lower it to the mat. And then the other side goes up and down. So as we change over, you're keeping the height of your body the same, but you're moving from your ankle. So getting good range of movement through the ball of the foot, right up into the hinge of your toes. We've got another two each side, I know. It's tough, but it's doable. And then one more time, you may get a little shudder and shake through your legs. That's completely normal. And then coming all the way back up. If that was enough for you, go ahead and repeat that round. Otherwise, join me for doubles. As we go down, we find our setup again, arms long in front of you. Let the arms and shoulders rest back. Don't let them pull forward. And now both heels are going to lift and lower. So as we're doing this, we're still breathing 
and you're keeping all those good things of your body upright. You've got your arm in line with your shoulder. There's no neck tension around. We'll go for two more. And then last one, lift. And then we're gonna return ourselves all the way back up. From here, we're gonna to turn to the side and you're going to find the bump that's at the edge of your leg. Most people think that's the hip joint. It's actually still the leg bone. And then we're gonna put the roller somewhere around that area. So you might be on it, you might be slightly above or slightly below. You're gonna find where it feels the best for you. And you're still gonna try and stay as balanced on your two feet. So from here, we'll just cross our arms over our chest just so that they're out the way. They kind of feel like they don't know where to go otherwise. So from this position, we're gonna stay standing on the outside leg and you're going to bring your knee forward on the roller leg and then take your foot back down towards the floor. And then again, pulling the knee forward and bringing it back. Now, if the roller is placed in the perfect position, there'll be a little slide of the roller up and down as you bring your knee with you. And that means you know that that little wheel is turning at your hip. So twist and untwist. We'll go for two more on the side, lift and lower. And then last time, lift and lower. Now you don't really know when you look what's happening, but there is a heap of stuff happening on that standing outside leg. So still keeping the roller there. Of course, if it shifts, you just put it back into position. Now what we're gonna do is try to stand on the inside leg. So you'll find there will be a slight adjustment with your leg. So it's no longer vertical, but it's on a slight lean. Again, cross the arms over your chest and then bring the outside leg up. From here, we're gonna to twist towards the leg, then derotate and lower your foot back to the floor. And again, lift and twist back to the start and down. As we're doing the twisting of the body, make sure you don't overly twist. And you see it's just about 25, maybe 30 degree rotation with your upper body, keeping your knee ideally facing forward and just letting your eyes and your chest start to do the wrapping around. We'll go for one more twist. Hopefully that roller doesn't slide down the wall as you keep contact with the outside leg and then bringing it back. All right, so a lot of work, as I said, happening through both legs in different ways. Hopefully you've also felt that through your feet. So we're gonna turn around and do the second side. I just need to move a microphone out the way. And then finding your balance. So again, hands just resting over the front of your chest somewhere. And then from here, we're going to bring that inside knee up and then bringing it back down. So very good, strong work for the standing leg muscles. So part of your gluteals, everyone's obsessed with glutes at the moment, especially the minimus and medius, which is what we're working. So they work to move a leg away and back, but they also work to keep you standing upright. And then we'll go for one more time, bringing the leg up and then taking the leg down. From here, we're gonna switch legs over again, as vertical as possible that you can manage. Bring your knee up and then we're gonna to rotate toward the knee down with the foot. Bring it up, stabilize there first, then add the twist, then to the center and down. So with everything, as we add layers of things, you just wanna make sure that you are stable in the, each part of the movement before you add. So if twisting today is not your favorite thing, then just stay with lifting the leg up. You'll get fantastic benefit, I always say that. What we do is full body work, so doesn't matter what level you're going to. Last one as we twist and then return everything back again. We're gonna spin ourselves around again back to the first side, same position. And from here, we're gonna send those arms out in front of us. So remember everything was about shoulder organization. Now we don't have any information coming at us. So we're gonna make sure that we're in the best position possible. Your inside leg, the one attached to the roller is now gonna to slide to touch the wall and bring it back. If you can, keep it like a hair space away from the ground as it moves in and moves out. Moves in, moves out. So from here, turn your palms to face each other. Now start to add the opposite arm open and close and open 
and close. Again, amazing work. Lots of leg things going on, lots of feet thing going on, but also incredible oblique strength helping to keep you still and steady in your torso and trunk. We go one more time, opening and closing, and then bringing it down. We flip over to do side two again. So finding it in the right position. Arms out in front, start with palms facing forward. Take the weight into the outside leg as you move the inside leg towards the side of the wall and back. So what's so nice about using these props, walls and rollers is that you've got somewhere to touch that gives a lot of information to the nervous system. Turn your palms to face each other and then move the opposite arm away and bring it back. So notice that I'm moving my arm and leg as balanced as possible. I'm not moving my arm further than what my leg can do. And then going back to where we are in space, the more information coming to our nervous system, the better it is for us to navigate our way through. We'll go for two more as we open and close and one more open and close and then drawing it down. All right, we've got a little bit of side work to do. So again, we're going to put that roller against the wall and then you're going to have your hand resting on. So we are not wanting to lean on a diagonal away, but still as upright as possible with your hand touching on. Have your feet a little wider than hip distance, so maybe about shoulder distance for this one. We're going to send your outside arm up and we're going to do a side bend reach. So we're going to keep the arms straight to begin with as you lengthen through the sides of the body and then return everything again. Now, if you've ever done my planking video series, you'll know that you need to have really good strong control through your shoulders and good um, understanding of keeping this arm steady away from the ground um, in order to do planking well. So we're just building into that awareness. And even if you do planking well, still good to do this one. And then going over again. So really getting a good side bend in the upper rib cage. We're gonna to start to add a bend in the elbow. So as you bend your elbow, it's like that single arm push up we started in the beginning and then pressing away. So different place, different space feels very different to the body as you're going over. But remember, everything is layered. If you can do the one, do the other, and then combine, it makes it better as we go. We'll do one more time on this side, bending into the arm, stretching the top arm over, and then coming all the way back. From here, we're gonna switch sides again, moving that roller in. I just noticed my roller was leaning forward. And having your feet that shoulder distance space apart, really feeling that shoulder blade set onto the back of the body and not hyper extending your shoulder joint or your elbow joint. Send your arm up and then going into a nice lean to the side. Whenever we focus on single sided things like this, it's very apparent which side is easier to move through, which side is stronger to hold you through. And that's really important because we're not beings that live doing two things at the same time, like both legs going forward and both arms going forward. We're always in a reciprocal movement pattern, meaning one thing doing one thing and the other doing the other. Very philosophical discussion I'm having with you. All right, so from here, we're gonna add in the bend and then over to the side and then pressing away. So again, folding in the elbow, side bending over. So again, one of the most challenging things with a side bend action is people like to drop their head or twist through the body. You're really trying to see if you can just go sideways. Sounds so easy. Not as easy as you think. And then coming all the way back and through. All right, still using this. You're going to feel some tone in your arms, by the way. So we've got one more thing to give a try for. We'll do four on each side. We're gonna pick a knee up, bring your arm towards the ceiling and then tap it behind and tap the floor and bring it to the top and take it to the bottom. And again, three Ooh. and one more four. Just a little curtsy, just to say thank you for the workout we're doing. And then go to the second side. Always check the alignment of the roller. It will move before you even know it. So we're going to bring the leg and the arm up and we're going to take it behind and drop and cross and again up and around. So moving things in cross patterns 
over the body center line so good for us and then I lost count so let's just do one more because it sounds fun and then bringing it all the way back and down be gentle with the roller as it comes all the way down give it some love and thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon bye